This episode of CleaningBiz.TV is made possible by Cleaning Business Consulting Group, personalized consulting for commercial and residential cleaning companies. I'm Jean Hansen, and this is a show that will help turn your vision into a successful cleaning business. Hi everyone, Jean here, and as you can see, we have a guest today, Sharon Cowan from Cleaning Business Consulting Group. We are Skyping today. I'm in Minnesota, and Sharon is in Florida. Welcome, Sharon. Thank you. Thank you. We're in wet and soggy Florida today. Yeah. <laughs> well, Sharon and I were recently talking about a blog post that she made, and it's actually a baseball story. And um, she actually related that to situations that we can find ourselves in in business. So, Sharon, can you just briefly tell the story? Sure. Um, it was a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I was at my grandson's uh, ball game. And uh, the day before this particular game, the coach had had a meeting with uh, the team because he was noticing some behavior that he was not excited about. Things like throwing their bats on the ground if they struck out, tossing their glove on the, on the ground if they missed a, a pop-up fly, things that were not really indicative of good sportsmanship or, or good behavior on the field. So he had this strong meeting and said, I'm not going to tolerate that anymore. We cannot uh, put up with that um, and so forth. The very next day, not 24 hours later, the team was in a, in a game and sure enough, batter came up and he struck out and what happened? He threw his bat on the ground. He walked off the field. Nothing happened to him. The coach did nothing. So a little while later, another player out in the field missed a pop-up fly, threw his glove on the ground. Nothing happened to him. The, the coach took literally no action at all. And it, it, to me, watching in the stands, I thought, this is very sad because he has sent a loud and clear message to those other players that even though I said that I'm not going to tolerate it, I'm tolerating it anyway. Mm -hmm. And you can do it anyway, and there are no consequences. It doesn't matter. So it really destroyed his level of credibility as a leader amongst this team. Plus, it sent the message to the other kids. It, it, we can do whatever we want to do. So I related that to business owners. And when they're in this situation of having employees who don't follow the rules and don't do what they're asked to do, and what kind of message that sends to the rest of the crew, the rest of the, the employees. Exactly. I mean, we, as business owners, we talk about it all the time. I, I, we talk about it in our discussion forum at the janitorial store and at my house cleaning biz. Um, we have to have these rules because something happens and we realize, oh, we don't have a rule around that, so we got to make a rule. But mm -hmm. then we drop the ball and we don't enforce the rule. Exactly. So what happens? It, it's yeah. It, it's it's very um, it's very difficult for owners to take that strong stand, and you have to set friendships aside. You still care about your employees, and and sometimes the one that breaks the rule may not be the one you really want to reprimand, but you have to do it. You have to to have the sacrificial lamb, so to speak, and set the example, and say, I said I would not tolerate this, and here is I'm demonstrating that I mean what. I say I am not going to tolerate it and it doesn't matter who it is that's the offender I'm not going to tolerate it right. and I think and, we find ourselves having a hard time disciplining those long-term employees especially right. because you know they've been with you for a long time and it just is a very uncomfortable feeling exactly Exactly. We think we're going to hurt their feelings or, oh, heaven forbid, they might leave. But we can't be held hostage by one or two good employees either. And that's exactly what that amounts to, is you are afraid to make a move. You're afraid to discipline. You're afraid to do anything with them because, heaven forbid, they leave. And then you'll be over a barrel. So, uh, you know, that, that speaks to other issues about continually, continually looking for good people and staff. Um, but you really, as a leader in your company, when you say something, you have to make the tough choices and follow through with it. Otherwise, you've totally destroyed your credibility and your good people. They'll go right down the drain. Too. Exactly. And sometimes we think that no one notices that we've just ignored a problem, but every employee is watching what we're doing and they start to see it. It not only, you know, it just, 
it creates um, dissent within the masses of our employees. Well, it does. I mean, it just creates all kinds of problems. And by the time you realize that there is a problem and that you've, you, you know, you're the cause of it, it may be too late or it, well, it may be it, it taking a ton of time to repair all the damage that you've done. Exactly. And then you're wasting your time and energy on dealing with those issues rather than building your business and getting new new clients. Right. So, you know, a lot of that can be eliminated by, by taking the, the right stand and the hard stand. And you can even relate it back to when we were children. We all had a parent who said, now, if you don't clean up your room, you're not going to get to do this or that. And how many parents really followed through with that? Right. And so children, just like employees, knew how far they could push the envelope. Right. How, so, how many times is she going to say <laughs> Something. Right. So how do we overcome that fear in a lot of instances of going ahead and, and either not necessarily disciplining unless it's a real problem, but how do we enforce the rules and get over that fear of, of doing that? Because we're afraid we might lose that employee or, or whatever the situation right. may be. I think we have to first come to grips with ourselves that says it's okay if this person leaves. My business is not going to collapse and have the confidence in your business entity as a, as, a, as a working organization that, okay, if they leave, yes, it'll be tough for a few days or a few weeks till I replace them, but there is always someone out there to work. This particular great employee that has broken the rules isn't going to be the first and isn't going to be the last. Having a plan in place for ongoing recruiting and training, having someone in the field that can step up and help cover this person's slot and it, it go it speaks to thinking in terms of a bigger vision and thinking in terms of planning ahead and not operating by the seat of your pants that if this one leaves today I'm really in a jam we've all been there and and we would be in a jam but it's temporary and you get through it and you come up with different ways but you have to be confident enough to know that you will get through it and continue to look for people all the time that would be good replacement people. Right. And just because you're enforcing a rule doesn't mean you're going to lose an employee either. Right. It just is showing that consistency and these are the rules and everyone must abide by the rules. Correct. Right. Correct. All right. Well, thanks, Sharon. I appreciate the good advice once again. My pleasure. That's it for today's show. If you have any questions on this topic, please post them below the video. And if you'd like to read the blog post Sharon wrote on this topic, the link is under the video at cleaningbiz.tv. I'm Jean Hansen, and I'd love to connect with you on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Just look for the links at cleaningbiz.tv. See you next time.